But the only way I know is knowing when you are resting, they are preparing better to beat us, so we have to prepare more. And training more and play better is the only way I know to keep that level. The idea is fundamental. The idea that we're going to do, it's so important. You have to give passes and passes, an extra pass and extra pass. Extra pass help you always to be together. Do the simple things, the simple. The rest is because you are good. Hey guys, how is it going? It is S2G and welcome to the first episode of my brand new Manchester City career mode series and honestly, I am really hyped to get this series underway man. I think it's going to be an incredible journey. I think it's going to be a lot of fun as well and I hope you guys do enjoy this one. Pep Guardiola has transformed the City side into a dominant force in England. They've won the Premier League with 4 games to spare and they've played some fabulous football. They struggled in the Champions League, they got knocked out in the quarterfinals, so they didn't really have the perfect season. So, I am in this series is to take this City side one step further. We're going to improve it by making some intelligent signings and using the money we have at our disposal. And we're going to try and win the Champions League while continuing to dominate in the Premier League and of course the other domestic competitions. We can also build up our youth academy and potentially get some top top youngsters and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're excited for the first episode of this Manchester City career mode series, make sure to drop a like on this video. 500 likes would be absolutely awesome and it would really help my channel. So if you could do that, just go down below and drop a like on this one. And if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 18 career mode content. The first thing we do in pretty much any of my career modes is basically just have a look at the squad we already have at our disposal, decide where we need improvements, which positions need strengthening, and basically just discuss what we have, discuss the squad. And if you guys have any transfer suggestions, you guys want to let me know your input, put them down in the comment section, man. I pretty much read every single comment, so it's a good way for me to know what kind of players you guys want to see in this Manchester City career mode series. So let's just get on with it. Now, our attack is so good. Sane Agu Aguero and Sterling is just perfect. Maybe Aguero is a player we might need to sell in future seasons, but for the first season, I think Aguero is just perfect. David Silva, Fernandinho and De Bruyne is a brilliant midfield, although Fernandinho and David Silva are pretty old, so maybe we need to look at replacements, but at least for the first season, I think they're perfectly fine. Mendy, Otamendi, Comp Company and Walker. Although I'm really happy with Otamendi, Comp Otamendi Company and Walker, I have my doubts over, over Mendy because he's only 78 rated so maybe bringing in a world class left back could really help and honestly I'm not really counting on a Fabian Delft to be um, one of my left backs. I'm probably going to sell him even though he's been decent for City I think we can do better than him. And yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to probably try and sign a left back to improve this first team. Now, I don't want to be making like way too many signings in the first season. I want to keep it realistic and make it as fun as possible for you guys to watch. So I think first season, we're definitely going to sign a left back. I think we need a backup CDM because we don't really have anyone else. We've got Gunzogan and Sore, but we'll still need one more player. And I think a CDM would really help because Fernandinho is the oldest in our midfield. So... A backup CDM would be really helpful, someone young, you guys can let me know in the comment section. And also maybe a backup winger because Leroy Sané, although he's our first choice winger, we don't really have anyone else who can play as a left midfielder apart from maybe uh, Diaz who's 67 rated. So maybe that's a position we need to improve upon. So a left back, a CDM and a left winger, I think those are my priorities. The rest of the positions we'll see what to do and again, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section. Just take a look at our transfer budget because it's actually insane. 131.48 million pounds in transfer budget and over 300,000 in our weekly wage budget. That is insane. We, can, we have pretty much the money to sign any player we want. Looking at our board expectations, they want us to develop a youth academy, which is something we will do. Domestic success, they want us to win the Premier League. They want us to win the FA Cup. And also, they want us to win the Champions League. So the board expects a treble from us in the first season and I'm hoping we won't disappoint them. We're gonna of course make signings in this series to help achieve those goals and I'm excited to do so man. So make sure to let me know your suggestions in the comment section below. A feature returning from my previous career mode and that is press conferences. Yes guys, they're back to this series and I'm sure you guys already know what they are and if you're new to this channel, let me explain. Press conferences are basically 
a segment of this series where you guys can ask me questions regarding this series and I'll try and answer them in the best possible way and it's really fun so if you guys have any press conference questions put them down in the comment section below and also as you would have heard I'm introducing a lot more new stuff to this series like goal of the month even end of the season awards so I really hope you guys are excited for all that kind of good stuff. Fan Buzz is a completely new segment I'm bringing to this Manchester City career mode series in fact it's something that I've thought of and I haven't used in any of my previous career modes, so it's brand new. I'm not sure how you guys are going to like it. So the idea is basically involving Twitter in my career mode series. So basically, you guys can tweet me at, of course, my Twitter handle, which is at OfficialS2G. The link to my Twitter will be in the description. Of course, tweets regarding the Manchester City career mode, regarding the games, basically anything. Kind of like press conferences, but not really questions. And I will feature it on this fan buzz segment in every episode. So it's a way where more of you guys can get involved in the series. And I think it can be a lot of fun. You guys know how popular football Twitter is and... I think it's a good way of involving that into this series and it yeah, could be a lot of fun so I'm not sure how it's going to go down so let me know in the comment section if you're excited for all these new additions to this career mode series. Before we hop on to make some transfers let's just discuss the players I want to get rid of. So a lot of them are youngsters but I just don't believe they will amount to anything at City. I just don't feel they've got the potential to be good enough at Manchester City and also that is why I'm pu I've put them on the transfer list. And Delph, I think he's 27, he's decent, but look at the wages he's on, that is a lot of money he's taking and I just feel that if we sign a world class left back, we've got Mendy, we've got Zinchenko, I wouldn't really need Delph, so getting rid of him just makes sense. And if we need that versatile player, we've already got that in Danilo, so putting Delph on the transfer list kind of makes sense in my opinion. And Mecca is a player I definitely want to loan out instead of selling because I believe he's got decent potential, so... Yep, these are the plays we're going to get rid of. Now, talking about the player I want to sign. Now, clearly, you would have noticed that the left-back position needed improvement. And who better than David Alaba? I just think he will be absolutely perfect for us in that left-back role. We need a left-back who's good at keeping possession, who's, who's really versatile, who's brilliant going forward. And I just can't see a better option than David Alaba. He's also played under Pep Guardiola before, so he knows the kind of football City will probably play. So... Yeah, I just think it'll be a perfect transfer to make. So he's got a release clause of about 58.6 million pounds. So if the deal wouldn't go through, I'll probably use that. So first of all, I want to negotiate with Bayern. Try and get that fee a bit lower, maybe around 50 million. We, we'll kind of be keeping the team of Man City spending insane amounts of funds on fullbacks. So, well, let's just continue that. So yeah, let's start off with a transfer fee. I'm going to be offering about... 50 million pounds as my first offer, which is a lot of money, by the way, but I feel he will be worth it, man. Alaba is world class. Wait, they want 61. I can directly pay the release clause instead. Why would I pay 61? Let's try and lower it a bit. Let's put in 53 and see. I mean, it's still only about 5 million lower than the release clause, but if we can get it for that amount, I would, I, I would be down. And there you go, Bayern's representative is pretty happy with the offer we've put in. And Alaba will probably be a City player if we can get the contract deal done. Time to negotiate with Alaba and his agent regarding his contract. So let's just get right into it. So squad role important, which I think is kind of underrated because I believe he would have asked crucial. But there you go, important squad role, perfect, I guess. Would give good opportunity for us to rotate with Mendy and give him some opportunities. I really like Mendy because... Honestly, if you've taken a look at his Twitter account, you'll know why I say I like Mendy, because it's just insane. But anyways, I want to give him a four-year contract, kind of makes sense. And yes, he's pretty happy about that, him and his agent. My client isn't considering adding a release clause. That is perfect. Let's accept and move on. We don't want any other clubs stealing him away. So no release clause just seems perfect. Now it's the interesting part, discussing his salary. It's crazy how similar his salary and Fabian Delft's was, considering how world-class or just how much better David Alaba is. And yeah, I just think it makes sense getting rid of Delft and bringing in Alaba. So we will offer him about 120, a uh, £10,000 increase in his to his current wages. And we'll give him a 500,000 in a signing bonus. Let's see if he accepts that. I doubt he will because he's 85 rated, so he might ask for more. And there you go. He's actually asked for a lot. But he's asked to reduce his weekly wages massively. That is really weird. I did not expect that. But he wants a 1.4 million pound signing bonus, which I'm down, man. You can have that. Okay, so he does want the 110,000 pounds. Fair play, man. That's a good contract, I believe. 
we're paying like about a 1.4 million pounds um apart from keeping the wages same i think it's a good deal and david alaba is our first signing in this manchester city career mode and he's already looked to, looking to be one of our finest signings and i think he's going to improve the squad massively kit number six for david alaba and i kind of feel it suits him what do you guys think let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to change his kit number but i feel like six looks good on him so we might just keep this and yeah, Alaba is our first signing and a really good one as well. Our team is already looking better with Alaba in it in that left back role. Now I think we just need a couple more improvements in a backup left winger and also maybe a backup CDM. But apart from that, with this insane amount of money we have in 77 million pounds, we can still make more signings. So any suggestions, put them down in the comment section below. In today's episode, we're going to kickstart our Premier League season by playing this game against Brighton. We might get through to this game against Everton as well, I'm not sure, but we're going to at least start off the Premier League season and hopefully we can get ourselves a win. Time to get some training done, first training session and these are the players I'm probably going to train a lot. The likes of Diaz, Phil Foden, Mendy, Zinchenko, all players that aren't really high rated, so training them kind of makes sense. Gabriel Jesus, I've just put him in there because I want his long shots and all to go up a bit because 73 long shots, I'm not too convinced with that. He's going to be a crucial player for us because we know Aguero's stamina is low and he's not going to get that much game time because of just his age and all that. So Jesus needs to be in top form for us. So let's simulate this training session, see how it goes down. And yeah, not bad. It's all three A's in our first training session. Players focusing. Foden, Mendes and Jenko all getting an A, Diaz and uh, Jesus getting a C, not bad at all. This is really interesting, we've got two transfer offers, one for Raheem Sterling, which I'm directly going to reject. I have no interest of selling him, especially to Arsenal. Fernandinho, this one kind of tempted me because of his age, but then again, I want to use Fernandinho because I really like him in this game, so I am going to reject this. Let me know if this was a mistake or not, because 23 million, I think, is a decent amount, but then again, Fernandinho is 85 rated, so maybe it's not a decent offer, so I'm not selling them for now. Now that we've signed David Alaba and we've got the likes of Zinchenko and Mendy, we don't really need Delph, and we've actually received a brilliant offer from Leicester City of 12 million. And I'm going to accept this, so let's hope Delph can negotiate with Leicester and he can join them. We'll get the extra money to bring in the players we want. That is a very interesting offer from Everton for Nicolas Otamendi, but nah man, I don't want to sell my key players in the first season itself. Let me know how you want me to proceed with the transfers. Do you guys want me to sell the likes of Otamendi and all? Who are kind of old but are still really good. I just don't want to do that in the first season itself. I mean, I don't want to lose the core identity of this city side, so for now I'm not going to be selling him. Regardless, Fabian Delph has been sold for about 12 million. We've received the extra funds and now we're looking pretty good in terms of our transfer budget. Wait a minute, what kind of a transfer is this? Barcelona have signed Eric Lamella for 17 million pounds roughly. Napoli have signed Julian Brandt, which is a really good transfer. Dortmund have sealed a 33 million pound deal for Andre Kramaric. That's a good transfer for him. Uh, and Roma have signed Ricardo Quaresma. What kind of money is that for a 33 year old? I don't understand that. Any recent transfers and Spurs, one of our rivals, have signed Fabian Johnson for about £10 million. So transfers flowing around and a good thing we've already secured Alaba, otherwise I would, I would have been sure that other clubs would be interested in him. Oh, now this is interesting, a loan offer for Phil Foden. The thing is, I want to keep him because I feel with training, we can make him a player that can be used in the cup games and also... I'm really not sure what to do with Phil Ford and I'm going to stall this deal now and let me know in the comment section, should we loan him out or should we give him the occasional game time here at Manchester City and help him develop in that way? Because I'm not sure loaning him is the best decision show. Let me know in the comment section what we should do regarding Phil Foden. Thought I'd let you guys know that I have changed the groups in the Champions League to make them as realistic as possible. So we've got City, Shakhtar, Napoli and Feyenoord in the same group as they were in real life. And even all the other groups have been changed to make it as realistic as possible. So I hope you guys do like that because I know you guys do appreciate the realism factor in career modes. But it is now time to get started off with our Premier League season. First game away from home against Brighton. It's a chance for us to give a statement to other clubs in the Premier League and show them that we are here to win the Premier League. And we haven't done much of transfer business. Why? Because I wanted to read through your comments first and then decide what else transfers I want to make. Because if I just do them on my own, what is the point? I want your input as much as possible in this series. So I've only made one signing that I really wanted to make, which was Alaba. The rest of the signings, you guys are going to decide. We've got about 100 million now. I think because of the season ticket sales, we got an extra boost in our funds. So 
Let me know what plays you guys want me to sign down in the comment section below and we'll do that in the upcoming episode. For now, we've got a game in the Premier League. Let's kick things off. For those of you guys wondering what difficulty am I playing this career mode on, it is on Legendary and also to make it even more difficult, I've adjusted the sliders to make it even harder basically. If you guys have any suggestions for what sliders I should keep to make the game even harder, even more of a challenge, let me know in the comment section below. Going unbeaten in the Premier League might be a bit too much but it's a challenge I'm willing to accept so let's try and achieve that. Now regarding the team against Brighton, I've gone with actually my strongest 11 at least on paper. It's a good opportunity for me to try out my best team and just see what players work, what formation works. I'm going to stick with the original City formation, which is the 4-3-3, uh, basically, where David Silva is a bit more forward com in comparison to De Bruyne. And yeah, I just want to see how this formation works. My aim is to keep as much possession as possible, try and play the pep way to keep the series as realistic. So expect some long possession spells in my game here against Brighton and hopefully it can work out and we can score a lot of goals as well. So I'm excited to see how these players perform. Sané, Aguero, Sterling, this trio gets their first opportunity to shine. The midfield gets a chance as well. Let's jump right in and see how they can perform. Here's David Alaba in a fantastic position to maybe cross this one in. He cuts this one back to Sergio Aguero. Ryan makes the save and they clear the ball away for a goal kick. Ah, Great attacking football. Alaba getting involved. Nice to see that Yaya Torre on the move to Newcastle. Well, what is that about? I'm not selling Yaya. Alaba. Aguero. Now KDB gets the shots off and that is just above the crossbar. We're playing some good football but... We're lacking in the final third. If we can fix that, I'm sure we'll get into the lead very soon. Here's David Alaba on the attacks. He's been actually brilliant in the early moments of this game. He finds Sané. Inside to Sergio Aguero. Gets the shots off Ryan with a brilliant save. Aguero inside the box is lethal. He gets the shots off in positions where I can't believe it's even possible to shoot. We've got ourselves a set piece. Let's see what we can produce from this. The header from Otamendi hits the crossbar and on the rebound we can't produce anything. So close to being our first Premier League goal, man. Brighton on the attack. Proper. Puts in a dangerous cross. Fernandinho, the one to get it away. Now De Bruyne. Now David Silva. Calmly plays it out to Kyle Walker. What's he doing on this side? Spreads the play to David Alaba. Now Kevin De Bruyne. Again, some brilliant passing football here. Sané. Kyle Walker in behind to Leroy Sané. This is the kind of football I've been wanting to play. Aguero might just get there. Ryan collects. Again, some brilliant build-up play. Just lacking in the final third. Finds Kevin De Bruyne. Here's KDB on the attack. Still Kevin De Bruyne. Cuts inside on his right foot. Gets the shots off. Ryan makes the save. And Sergio Kun Aguero gets the goal for us. As we lead 1-0 in this series. It was a cheeky goal, you know, coming from a rebound. But... I don't really care, it's our first goal of this series and it's the goal poacher, Sergio Aguero, the man who scored the most goals for Manchester City. He gets us the first goal in this series, kind of fitting as well. Decent finish from that position. Our opponents might be on the attack, Izquierdo goes for the finish shot and he almost scored there. I mean, if he would have kept that one on target, I'm sure Edison would have a lot of trouble keeping that one out. Here we go on the attack once again, David Silva. Goes down inside the box and we get ourselves a penalty. Let's go. A chance for us to double up our lead. And it could be a chance for Sergio Aguero to score another goal for Manchester City. And make his tally up to two in the Premier League now. Come on Aguero. You've got to score this. Let's go. I'm going to go left of the keeper. Oh my god. I've missed. That is so bad for me. I mean, ah, oh, that's annoying. Here's Kyle Walker in a great spot. Cut back to De Bruyne who should score. And there you go. We won't let the penalty miss. Costas as De Bruyne gives us the lead. The highest rated player in this series scores in the first game itself. And it was Kyle Walker with the assist. You're going to see our fullbacks providing a lot in this series because I've set them to overlap. So they're going to be making those runs down the wings and they're going to provide for our players. And there you go, Kyle Walker with a brilliant assist. And what a finish as well from De Bruyne with his left foot. He's got five star weak foot, so right foot, left foot doesn't really matter for him. Otamendi unable to catch up to Izquierdo, cross played into Gross, gets the shots off, Edison makes a comfortable save. Anyways, I'm actually going to be making a substitution. I will bring on Gundogan for David Silva, who's been actually really good, but I just want to get a feel of Gundogan, because he's also very, very good. I will also bring on Gabriel Jesus for Sergio Aguero. He just missed a pen, so maybe bringing on Gabriel Jesus makes sense. Gabriel Jesus back to Raheem Sterling, can he control it? Oh, brilliant touch from Sterling. He's managed to keep hold of the ball as well. A brilliant Cruyff turn. 
Still Sterling. Puts in a brilliant cross as well. Oh, nobody could get their head to it. Now Gundogan. Another Cruyff turn. Finds De Bruyne. Shoots with his left foot, but a block from one of the opposing defenders again. Some really good football from the likes of Sterling, Jesus and all. Good stuff. Raheem Sterling. Inside to Gabriel Jesus now. De Bruyne. Try and cut this one back to Gundogan. He couldn't get a shot off, but it's Raheem Sterling. Gets it on his right foot. Shoots. Ryan makes the save on the rebound. All chaos from the opposing Brighton defence, but they somehow get the ball away. Gundogan finds Kevin De Bruyne. He finds space out wide to Raheem Sterling. Crosses it in to Gabriel Jesus with a brilliant header as we make it 3-0. Raheem the Dream Sterling with the assist and Gabriel Jesus scores his first goal in this series. What a header as well. The way he just got ahead of his marker was brilliant and the cross as well from Sterling was inch perfect. 3-0 against Brighton. What a start to this series. Oh no, our opponents might have a chance to score. And they have scored. That was such a poor goal to concede, man. I should have just cleared it away from the free kick. But uh, uh, that's disappointing, but oh well, 3-1, we still get the 3 points, which I guess is all what matters. And there you go guys, we get ourselves our first win in this series in the Premier League and a confident performance from this side. I'm actually really impressed with the way we played, I mean apart from the goal we conceded, it was practically a perfect performance. The football we played, phenomenal, and if this is a sign of things to come, I'm actually really excited to see how things go in this freaking series, because I think it's going to be incredible. Just take a look at these stats, pure domination, 12 shots, 7 on target, 58% possession. I told you guys I wanted to play possession based football and we just did that, we outclassed Brighton and we did it really well. Apart from the goal we conceded, I think it was as I said a perfect performance. And you guys can take a look at some player ratings as well, Kyle Walker was amazing this game. Got himself an assist as well, Raheem Sterling as well with an assist. And yeah, Gabriel Jesus, De Bruyne and Aguero with the goals. A really awesome performance and I'm so excited for the future games. That was the perfect start for us in the Premier League as we now lead the league after one game, which is obviously really, really nice to see. Next episode, we've got a couple more Premier League games and also this cup game against Nottingham Forest away from home. But most importantly, I'm going to be reading through your comments, deciding what to do with this 100 million, where to improve, what kind of players to sign and we're going to improve this team even further. So... Make sure to let me know your transfer suggestions in the comment section below. Let's take a look around the world and just see what is happening in terms of transfers. Real Madrid have signed Mehdi Benatia. That's a transfer I see happen a lot in career mode. Apart from that, Fabio Martins. I'm not sure who he is, but Liverpool have signed him for about £16 million. Some interesting signings going around. Premier League have been strengthening. Arsenal have signed this guy, Aaron Martin which is again very very interesting so opposing teams are strengthening we need to do the same so let me know your transfer suggestions in the comment section below before we end off the episode you guys have to vote for your player of the episode yes guys that segment is returning to the career mode as well and your nominees for today are first one being kyle walker i think he was brilliant as a fullback in today's game bombing down the wings and he was just perfect in this game and your second nominee David Alaba, he didn't score or assist in the game, but the performance he put in was phenomenal. And in my opinion, I think he was probably the best or second best player on the pitch alongside Walker. So it's a tough one. And I'm kind of surprised to see my both fullbacks being nominated for player of the episode. So you guys can vote between them and decide your player of the episode. And I'll reveal the results of the vote in the next one. So that is going to be the end of today's first episode. I really, really hope you guys have enjoyed the first one. It took a lot of time to make this series you know, the first episode of it, and I've put in a lot of effort to bring in new stuff, and I really hope you guys appreciate it. Stuff like goal of the month, goal of the season, player of the year, I'm going to be bringing that as well as we progress in the series, so a lot more to come. Really hope you guys have enjoyed the first episode of this one. 500 likes would be absolutely brilliant, and if you aren't new around here, make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 18 career mode content. Make sure to tweet me for being a part of the fan buzz section. Also, leave your press conference questions, and I will see you guys next time for another episode of a Manchester City career mode episode, probably tomorrow, so get hyped, man, because I am.